two weeks ago when Elon finally closed on Twitter, we, we wanted to investigate what's happening, why, and is it what it looks like? We have four hypotheses and research questions associated with those hypotheses to inform our research. Hypothesis three, one of the things that we're seeing is that people experience the internet in different ways in different spaces. So here it's many ways of being with different modes for different spaces. So if the design of online digital public spaces allowed for code switching, for different ways of being and communicating that are specific to the scale, the number of people who are involved and the kinds of interactions that are occurring, our hypothesis is that people would be better able to navigate digital space and digital communities. And what's most fascinating to me is trying to understand the uh, impact of the various affordances. There was a great discussion on uh, Mastodon with a professor, Jonathan Flowers, about the lack of quote tweets and the impact that has on Black Twitter and call and response and what was able to be built on Twitter that is not to be built on Mastodon. I asked an expert in, in Black Twitter whether there would be a Black Mastodon, and this person said no, as of now, no, because the affordances aren't there. I, I also get frustrated with journalists who, who write headlines that says, Twitter says, or Twitter got mad about, or Twitter, there is no one Twitter, right? And then people can't see the trees for the forest. They think of Facebook as a company and think of Mark Zuckerberg. We now think of Twitter and we think of Elon Musk, unfortunately, and, and we miss the individuals. And I get angry with journalists who say, oh, Twitter's a cesspool, we should all leave. And I say, you're leaving behind the voices whom you ignored for the entire history of mass media, who finally have a place where they can have their own space and now you turn your back on them again. How dare you? The point of black Twitter is to finally have a space for black people not in white gaze. And um, so I think that's a model. I think we can learn a lot from that in terms of how we might wanna structure this future world, which does mean then we've gotta have a discussion about the affordances and what's desired by different cultures. We, we saw it through the web three kind of like era so far is that people don't wanna figure out decentralization because it's too complicated. People don't wanna decentralize until I guess there's a clear downside to centralization. Do you think there's still kind of this uh, trade-off between decentralization and um, the ease of use in the case of uh, Mastodon? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been making TikToks about Mastodon. So lots of people who had literally never heard about it, like had never heard the name, sometimes some of them even before they saw my video, a lot of people are telling me like why this is too complicated. They do not have any desire to try to figure this out. We tell people like, you know, it doesn't really matter like what what instance you pick, like just pick one and you can change it and you can follow anyone. Um, which is true, uh, sort of, because it is the case, like I'm on an, an an instance that's like run by another academic. It's like for my sort of subfield of computer science. I trust this person. I don't mind that he could read my DMs if he decided to. I know that it's not going to like shut down tomorrow. You know, there's a code of conduct like based on our professional community, but there's not like a privacy policy. Or... So there is some extent to which you need to be kind of careful about what instance you're joining. Like you don't trust Elon Musk, but like, do you trust whoever is running, you know, this thing that popped up as a possible instance in the app or whatever? I think the, the physical metaphors are useful. In addition to the Twitter, what I used to always say, Twitter was a dive bar with, you know, a hundred million people and Instagram was an art gallery where everyone was trying to look amazing. And Facebook was the, the community hall you rented for the family reunion. You know, in some ways you could say that, that Mastodon or the Fediverse is kind of like Burning Man and that everyone's like, go to the Fediverse and join. And then like, you're like, pick a camp. And like, you could end up like, I was at the Black Rock Observatory. So like half the camp had PhDs and we were setting up telescopes and giving science talks. And then, you know, two doors down is an orgy tent and like you know around the corner is some some techno party tent and like yes it's all the same space and you can walk between them and connect them but the context of the discussions you're having matters so much and you know people yeah burning man's extreme privilege and everything else but it's also the 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 camp metaphor is useful um, in terms of like, these are these communities and they have norms, but they're within this larger sphere. A lot of people say it's like email, right? That's kind of like the analogy that seems to click, but have you found any, um, you know, good messaging that, uh, resonates with people? Like what's your favorite way to explain it to 
um, folks who are confused or stuck in that platform centric mentality. The email thing kind of worked, but mm -hmm. also like young people don't use email. <laughs> 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 um, uh, that kind of work. I, there, I, you know, I've seen metaphors that work fairly well. Like my my colleague Brian Keegan just wrote for the conversation about Mastodon as being like college dorms, um, and that kind. Like some, I saw some people being like, "Oh, that makes sense." I've seen people talk, like I saw a thing the other day that was like, "Mastodon is like blogging." Was another thing was like, "Mastodon is like a school." I, you know, so many interesting metaphors, and I think different ones work for different people. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm resisting the metaphors because I don't think we know what it is yet. But I remember going to BloggerCon, and the early bloggers regretted, the tech bloggers regretted, the war bloggers coming in regretted, the media bloggers coming in, and it's it's always been the case. We tend to look at the future and the analog of the past. We want it to be something, and it's something new. My argument constantly is that the internet is not a medium, that we in media tend to look at the world uh, in our in our godlike image, that uh, it's a sphere called media inside is print and, and broadcast, and now we have a new thing called digital. I think it's the opposite, where the connected world is the large sphere. Media is one sector in there, along with education, along with retail, along with everything else. And I think we have to reimagine what the world is. And so I resist the metaphors for now. We have the opportunity to renegotiate our norms in this world and, and ask what we want to do to treat each other. And we've learned, I hope we've learned lessons from treating each other shittily on Twitter and from watching Facebook take over the world. And so it's up to us human beings to do this with the help of the brilliant technologists who are here and the responsibility is ours. <laughs>